Hey there CNCers! I'm going to show you how to make a nifty bedside catch-all tray for Father's Day using Vectrix V-Carve version 12's brand spanking new V-Carve inlay tool path. Let's go! Got a person in your life who needs a good place to organize their gear for bedtime? Well, I'm one of those guys. And with Father's Day coming up, it seemed like a great opportunity to build myself something useful and to teach you guys about a new toolpath option. And if you stick around, I've got a great little gadgety addition to the bedside tray that I can't live without that I will share with you. As with every project tutorial that I do, I want to teach people, uh, the people watching, a new skill or a tip or a trick or even just to gain some confidence by seeing that certain skills aren't as hard as they think they are. The bedside catch-all tray on its own is a pretty basic project all in all. Figure out what size you want it to be, what style of attachment you want between the two pieces. I'll explain that in just a little bit. And if you want to personalize it with a name or an image or something else. Inlays, however, are one of those mysterious CNC things that people think are crazy difficult just because they look fairly difficult. And to be honest, they can have their kinks. However, the wonderful people over at VCarve must have heard people whispering and decided to take some of the difficulty out of creating VCarve inlays. I'll show you how, with just a few clicks, you can get a stunning inlay to level up lots of your CNC projects. Let's get this tray a rocket! I feel the need to give a super quick rundown of the process I use to carve this project because there are a certain number of kind of like steps and you know methods behind it that I thought of. First I cut the plug. Then I cut the pockets and the profiles for the base without moving the base after cutting those paths. So the base was still glued to my wasteboard. Then I glued the plug into the pockets and I let them dry. Then I surfaced the plug using the vectors from the design, which is why I didn't move the base from my wasteboard. Now, obviously this isn't the only way to get a great final product. So make sure that what you do works best for you, your situation and your workflow. For this project, I am going to be using some quarter inch by basically 12 by 12 Baltic birch plywood for the base and some lovely yellow canary wood for the plug. I am designing this project so I can get both pieces of the base out of one sheet of plywood, which is more than enough to fit my phone and my glasses and my watch and you know, some extras. I also like the look of trays where the two pieces kind of lock together by creating slots that slide together. The slots that I have created are a quarter inch thick to match the thickness of my material. So it will slide together fairly tight and I'm pretty good with that. So there's no wobbling. I used a few rectangles with some radiuses to cut the profile shape to accommodate my watch and my notch for my glasses. The only real extra thing I did for this base was adding the dog bones to the inside corners of the slots that will slide together. If you don't add these little dog bones in there, the radius of the bit will create a rounded inside corner where the two pieces come together and they won't be able to slot together nice and square. So that's why I added the dog bones. I was going to have a shelf for my phone to rest on, but I decided it was kind of a waste of space, so I got rid of it. Getting rid of the shelf is also where my gadgety addition comes in, but we'll get to that in just a second. The base is going to have a small pocket on the front side built in for like rings and things, and that's what's happening right here, just, you know, creating the outline and the pocket for it. And using the fillets or fillet, depending on where you're from, Using that tool allows me to change these square corners to nice radiuses to match the feel of the rest of the tray. Keeping this part super simple, I'm cutting both parts of the tray with a profile tool path. Our eighth inch CNC down cut end mill will do the trick so I can fit both pieces on one sheet. The bit, because we're not carving anything too crazy, will handle cuts at about a 16th inch depth of cut at about 100 inches per minute pretty easily, I'd say. I found after working through the process that I could save quite a bit of time by not having quite so many bit changes. So that's why I'm using eighth inch down cuts where you would probably normally use a quarter inch. Just trying to save time and a little bit of space. Here is a fantastic tip. I am so thrilled about this one. If you have ever found yourself wanting to edit specific nodes, so you're in no edit node mode and you want to edit specific nodes and move them specified distances, you're gonna love this. Select the nodes that you want to move. If you right click and go down to properties, you will see that you have the ability to move the nodes that you've selected specific distances, either absolute or relative. I think this is genius because I'm that kind of like person that likes to really tinker with things and know exactly where they're going. Edit node, 
specified distances. The pocket is ironically going to get a pocket toolpath to carve it out. I am using that same eighth inch down cut end mill for this. I'm not going very deep. There's just a little bit of a lip. And while yes, it's slower than a quarter inch, it wasn't that much time. If I was doing lots of them, maybe I'd consider the tool change, but I'm doing one. It's not a big deal. I have some faux leather that I'm thinking about gluing into this little pocket. So I'm including the thickness of that leather in my depth of cut. Now this is where my little techie gadgety addition comes in. I'm going to add a wireless charger to this tray. I know. I'm such a rebel. I have one of these little pucks sitting on my bedside table now, and it is glorious. There's no wires to mess around with. I just put my phone on there, the light changes color, boom, it's charging. However, I don't really want to spoil the look of the front of the tray with the puck. So I'm going to hide it behind. How, you ask? I did a little testing and found that I can have up to an eighth of an inch thickness for the material, and the phone will still charge. I measured the puck in the cable, created some shapes just a hair larger than those dimensions, and added pocket tool paths for each. You'll see in the files uh, that the circular part, I actually did use a quarter inch bit because I was already doing a bit change because the cable was too thin, so I am using a 16th inch for that just to make sure they really tuck in there tight. Just remember, the charger pockets are meant to be carved on the backside, so make sure you flip your material over. They will be the last tool path that you carve for this project. As a guy who absolutely loves fishing, I figured this project would be a great place to add some, so I added this school of fish with a little message to where my family might find me if my stuff is missing. Now it is time for the new V-Carve inlay toolpath. Select the vectors that you want to inlay and click the V-Carve inlay toolpath. This is why I wanted to show you this new option. Like I said, people seem to think that V-Carve inlays are really scary, but look at how simple Vectric has made this. Your pocket depth is how deep you want your pocket to be. Your glue gap is simply the space between the pocket and the plug for the glue to seep into. And the surface gap is simply the gap that will be between the surface of your material and the surface of the plug of the piece that you've just pocketed out. It's not too crazy, it's not scary, you got this. To carve out all of my pockets, I'm going to be using the CNC 60 degree V-bit. I'm running it around 80 to 100 inches per minute. Depending on the material that you're carving, you may wanna tinker with this setting. I found with some oak tests that I was doing that when I was running it too quickly, I was getting a lot of tear out because the wood is just too fibrous. So experiment and use the settings that work for your piece of wood. After some experimentation, I found I could add a clearing pass and it would save me about 40 minutes of carving versus just using the V-bit on its own to create the pockets. The eighth inch down cut fit the bill again. So that's what I used to do the clearing passes. 16th of an inch depth of cut, 100 inches per minute, same as before ran no problem. The only other thing to do is to create a sheet for the plug to be created on. And that's if you want to. I found that it makes it a little bit easier to keep organized and to move it around after uh, once you've calculated the V-carve inlay toolpath if you create that extra sheet. The toolpath automatically creates the vectors for the plug and mirrors them to whatever location you specify. I have already created the sheet for my plug, so I'm gonna select that from the dropdown. By changing the plug outer boundary to vector offset and putting in a dimension, instead of the entire sheet being calculated, it's going to offset the selected vectors by the dimension we punch in, and it'll make the plug a little easier to manage. Rename, calculate, and whammy, you got yourself a V-carve inlay toolpath done in what? A couple of minutes? Amazing. If you'd like to, you are able to double click and move these vectors for the plug around uh, your material just like any other vector. However, just make sure that you do not modify the vectors in any other way other than moving them as a group. Their shape, size, spacing, etc. need to be left as they were calculated so they will fit into the pocket that we're carving. And the only other toolpath we need to create is a profile to cut out the plug. You could cut the plug out with a scroll saw or a band saw, but we've already got the shape and the machine, so we're gonna take advantage of them. Grab the outlines used for creating the offset of the plug. So not the little details, the outline around it. Add a profile toolpath to it, and I'm gonna finally bust out that quarter inch down cut that I so desperately have wanted to use. Set the depth to match your plug stock. I'm going to select cutting on that vector, not inside or outside, on. By doing this, it will ensure that the face of the plug is flat around the profile, so the faces will be flush from, to one another between the plug and the pocket. Save your toolpaths, and we're ready to carve. Let's glue the plug into the pocket. Apply a liberal amount of glue to the pocket. Give the plug a little as well. Stick them together 
add some weight and let them dry. Now that the glue is dry, you've got a couple of options on how to remove the excess plug material. Again, some people use band saws or hand saws, and there's nothing wrong with those methods, but I'm going to use my long mill to remove the excess material. In the plug toolpath, it will tell me what V-Carve has calculated the excess plug thickness to be after glue and surface gaps. So that's what that number is right here. In my case, it's telling me there is approximately 0.13 of an inch excess material. I will select the vectors used for the pocket and use the offset tool to create a boundary around them. In my case, 0.2 of an inch worked nicely to create it all the way around. I'm deleting any of the internal vectors, so I'm left with just the exterior boundary. I'll use this new boundary to create a pocket tool path. Now, being the chicken that I am, I would rather do some sanding than carve into my base surface. So I'm gonna make my pocket depth 0.12 of an inch from the surface of the plug. I will set it to raster, no profile pass. I'm gonna ramp my plunge moves like I always do. I'm gonna rename, I'm gonna calculate. I just wanna stress that it is important to note that the way I ran my plug surfacing pass, my zero is from the surface of my plug, not from the base material or the wasteboard itself. I also feel the need to give what seems to be a fairly regular disclaimer that the file that we may share with you uh, may have toolpaths in a different order than the ones that I've shown throughout the tutorial. None of the settings will have changed, but I may have filmed while cutting the actual project that there was just a better order to things. So my suggestion would be, Download the file, check the toolpath order in the shared file, even if you don't use the file itself to create your project. <laughs> to finish this project was pretty basic. I gave the pieces that I had left a gentle sand all the way around. Nothing fancy for the finish on this one, just something to treat the wood and really, you know, make the grain pop. In my case, I did test a couple of wax products, but found ultimately, boringly, whatever, <laughs> that Ligna gave just that little bit of extra depth and shimmer to the wood. I used some spray adhesive on the back of the leather to add it to the pocket to spice up this already amazing looking tray. So you can see here when I'm carving out the puck part of things that somehow I didn't save over my original kind of idea file settings and it went way too deep. Um, this is where not every project goes perfect, and I am no exception to that rule, clearly. I mean, there's enough evidence on YouTube to prove that. <laughs> However, um, when you do make a mistake, sometimes you're stuck with it and you just gotta start over, and sometimes you're able to work a little bit of magic and, you know, get a little creative and make a fix. So, if you watch this until the end, you will see what fix I made, or maybe you won't because I did such a good job covering it. I don't know about you guys, but not only does this tray look freaking awesome, but it gives me actual places to put my things at night. As a person with absolutely incredibly poor eyesight, knowing where my glasses will be left when I can't see them is actually like a really big deal. But having this little beauty sitting on my bedside table eliminates all of that guesswork moving forward. As always, I really hope you guys learned something new in this video. There are so many cool new options in V12 that I hope you will spend some time to check them out. When you do, drop us a comment down below to let us know which was your favorite new feature. We appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy lives to spend a little bit of time with us. We know there are lots of places to find your info and we're beyond grateful for the support and love that you guys give us. So make sure you keep on spreading the good word about CNC and until the next fun project, we'll see you around the CNC.